future of the U.S.-China relationship is so difficult to predict because you have two major powers that are trying to navigate both complex interdependence and intensifying security competition at the same time. This is a pattern of interaction that hasn't really been witnessed in the history of modern international relations. At the same time, there are multiple variables that will influence how those two countries navigate that competition. My chapter aims to simplify how we think about the future of the U.S.-China relationship. It first identifies a series of variables that will influence the trajectory of the relationship, looking at questions like the scope of the security competition, the nature of domestic politics, the quality of the commu communication channels, and other factors. And then it applies those variables to five different scenarios. Scenarios ranging from condominium on the positive side to a new Cold War that's occasionally hot on the negative side. Of my five scenarios, the one that unfortunately is the most probable is scenario number four, which I call a slow burn towards rivalry. It's a situation of competition between the United States and China, but competition that's not actively managed or it's not managed particularly well. And so the competitive aspects of the relationship, the security competition, the technology competition, the debate of ideas between American and Chinese policymakers, that grows as the tools to manage it diminish. And so you have a situation of a competition that gradually uh, that gradually devolves into something that looks much more like a long-term strategic rivalry. There's several things I'd like policymakers to take away from my chapter. Number one, confrontation is not inevitable. It's possible to manage competition. Number two, preventing the drift from competition, even militarized competition, to something that looks like confrontation or war will require very active management. Number three, dialogue is not appeasement. Rather, dialogue is an essential component to competition. To compete well, you need to make sure that you're communicating clearly and effectively. One of the critical features of effective deterrence is clear, credible, consistent communication, and dialogue is key to that. The final lesson I'd like policymakers to take away from my chapter is that risk and friction are an inevitable part of managing the competition. Not only should they learn to tolerate risk and friction in the long-term competition with China, but we should use it and leverage it to our advantage. As both a scholar of U.S.-China relations as well as a former policymaker, I don't believe we have the luxury of being optimistic or pessimistic, but rather, to paraphrase Henry Kissinger, I'm simply determined, determined to ensure that this relationship does not end up in war.